the Application Lifecycle Risk Management Podcast, Episode 7. I, J, and K should die. One of the hardest things we do as programmers is name things. But the easiest thing to name is counter variables, and most of us do it wrong several times a day. Of course, I'm talking about the notorious habit of naming our counter variables I, J, or K, depending on how far down we've nested our loop. Now, my understanding of the history of I, J, and K as common variables that we use in programming is that the practice started in Fortran. There are two reasons why Fortran programmers did this. Since Fortran is primarily a math language, I, J, and K were used in math and so the practice was carried over into Fortran, and from there into other languages. Fortran encouraged this by also automatically declaring i, j, and k as integers. So, using i, j, and k made the code slightly easier to write, and seemed to be considered a best practice at the time. The other reason i, j, and k have prevailed as indexing variables is because In the early days, our variable name length was limited, and in some languages, the variable names were stored in our code and consumed memory, which was a precious resource we didn't want to waste on long variable names. And so, the practice continues to this day, largely because we've always done it that way. But let me tell you a story that illustrates why this is a bad idea. Admittedly, this story is pretty old, but only because in my 28 years of programming, this is still the best story I have to illustrate the issue. You see, one day, back when I was still regularly programming in C++, for you kids out there, C++ is what Java and C-sharp get most of their syntax from, my manager came to me with a bug. Now, the interesting thing about this bug is that it only occurred with one particular data set. Most of the time, it worked. So, I put on my detective's hat and went to work. Now, I tried to go for the quick kill first, so I set breakpoints at various locations and checked variables and found out... nothing. That's right. Absolutely nothing. After about four hours of trying various methods of the above, and trying to step through the code only to find the looping that was taking place was going to cause that to take several weeks, I finally stumbled onto the problem. And I do mean stumbled. There's no way I was going to find this problem using any of my standard debugging techniques. So here's what the code looked like. We had an outer 4i equals loop to an inner 4j with an inner 4k. And then inside of that, there was this condition that barely ever happened, but was happening with this data set. And then for i equals 0, i less than 3. So, what was happening is that the code was being reset. The i was being reset in the inner loop. Now, you can't maybe see this if you're just on the podcast, but it wasn't that obvious. You see, there was lots of code between the 4i and the 4j and the 4k and the if condition so that if you just looked at the code and scrolled through it, you weren't going to see it right away. In fact, I didn't see it until I actually literally stumbled over the if condition and the 4i. Now, this code is wrong on so many levels. But the chief problem with the code is that by the time the original programmer for this routine got to the inner 4i loop, they had forgotten that they'd already used i as a variable. For all I know, the guy who put the inner 4i loop in wasn't even the same guy as the one who created the outer variable. So, how do we fix this code? Well, it's actually pretty easy. In fact, creating variable names that mean something in place of i, j, and k is one of the easiest code fixes we can implement. What is i an index of? If you're looping through an index of bananas, call it banana index. It isn't rocket science. And so, my code challenge to you is this. Never, ever 
use I, J, or K, or any other single letter, as a variable name in your code. There should be a rule in your code quality checking that just prevents this, even in JavaScript code. With tools like closure compilers, there's no valid reason to use short variable names, even in JavaScript. And when you find an existing single letter variable name, change it to something meaningful. If you want to see some references that I used in this blog or in this podcast, uh, go to my website at blog.dmbcllc.com, episode 7.